Hello, once again, Star Wars Unboxing Fan, welcome to another episode on the road of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and we are on the road because there is another local toy show, the Woodbridge Toy Show, about 30, 35 minutes from my home, and uh, I like this toy show. It's, uh, it's a little bit smaller, smaller, you know, not, not a, although you would never know it was smaller when you look at it, because uh, they pack a lot of vendors into one little area um, but it's always nice to see you know what uh, what people are are uh, selling what people are into these days um, obviously I'm always looking for um, the Star Wars collectibles I could find I don't know if I'll be picking up too much today uh, because I'm actually not looking for too much today. I, I as people know, watching the channel, I've actually started uh, thinning out a little bit of the collection. Um, I've, I've kind of stopped, almost completely stopped collecting Black Series six-inch figures. Not because I don't like them. I, I absolutely love them. It's just there's just not enough room for me to have them. So uh, what I think I want to do, and I've said this on the channel before, is I've been mean, kind of pulling back to focus on vintage collection, retro collection, and if there are any uh, Black Series figure characters that I really that I really resonate with or that, that I really like that haven't been announced yet for vintage, those are the ones I might initially get. Um, but even them, I would, I, if once in a vintage collection version is made, if it's made, uh, I would then pull back. But I'm also curious to see if sometimes if people do do some customs and they sell that, I'd be interested in seeing that. But there's a ton of other things, of course. I mean, you know, it's funny. I, I watch so many other toy uh, collection, toy collector uh, YouTube uh, channels, and there are people that are just into all toys, so toys from the, all toys from the '70s, like all vintage toys from the '70s, all toys from the '80s. You know, GI Joe, Transformers, He Man, um, and I just. You know, mask. That was another one that's pretty popular, and I just kind of scratch my head. Like I, even if I just focused on vintage alone, I guess that's what it is. Probably, you know, vintage alone. You know, it's finite, right? You do it. It was the '70s. It was the '80s, and then you can spend your money to maybe try to, you know, finish a card collection or pick up all those loose items of things that you just never had or maybe you had but got rid of. And you could do that with more than one brand. You know, you could do that with 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 uh, Star Wars. You could do that with you know with Mask. With GI Joe would be tough. Man. I thought you thought I think you thought Star Wars was a lot. GI Joe was just through the roof because I collected GI Joe. I mean, as a kid, I did. But then I, stupid me, I gave it all away. I had a friend of mine on, on my street that was a little bit younger than me, and I was kind of done with, with GI Joe. And I said, Yeah, you can have everything. He probably sold it all now as an adult. <laughs> Oh, well, it's okay. I'm sure he had fun with it. All right, so, uh, yeah, but, you know, just, sorry, my, ran, my rambling here, but, uh, you know, just, I wanted to talk while we're going a little bit, like, the state of collecting, you know, and uh, at the time of this recording, it's uh, late summer, 2023, Yeah, collecting is evolving, and I think it's going to evolve into a lot of different things. I think that with kind of creator space becoming such a bigger thing now with 3D printers, I really feel like things are going to really start to evolve into a lot of different things. And, I, and I'm really wondering if, if how long it's gonna be before companies like Hasbro and Mattel take this creator space. And what I mean by creator space, I'm talking about people that do customization, um, that, that, that print, 3D print their own figures and set and you know sell the 3d files to other people so that they can print those figures and i wonder how long it's going to be before hasbro and mattel start having you know getting on board with that and just saying okay we are going to now start selling 3d printed files of action figures and characters and then you can print them any size you want you can print them little big and you know maybe they'll even do vehicles that you can print and like print the pieces out like models and put them together now i do think that in a lot of ways 
that would still only get a limited crowd because there are people that are not very creative or rather are not crafty or maybe un, uninterested in, you know, you, you know, when you do a 3D print, I've never even done it, but I know that when you do it, you have to print them. You have to make sure that the parameters are right and your printer's working so that it prints correctly. And then once it's printed correctly, you have to cut the little support pieces off and you have to sand everything down. And apparently it's a ton of sanding, at least at present. And then you put the item together, you have to glue, the, glue it together so it's, so it's, you know, like an action figure pieces are all glued together and then you have to paint it and painting I've seen people do painting there's a great channel mighty Java collectibles who collect pretty much only Java the hut denizens you know and maybe cantina band creatures and he does a lot of 3d printing He'll like make you know 50% size versions of the um, you know the original figures but he'll paint them to look exactly like them and to the amount of time and effort and care he puts into it is it's, a, it's an artistic skill and it's not something that everybody has so I don't know if that if we're quite ready for that but then I thought of something else I think well and I talked to some of my you know tech savvy friends a little more tech savvy than me and I asked them I said so how far away do you think we are from color 3d printing I mean I you know I remember like very when I first started teaching the the computer lab was right next to my music room and I went in there and the guy was all excited when he showed me a color printer that was the size of a regular printer, like a little desktop printer. And it printed color. And I thought that was the most amazing thing ever. I could print photos. Now, at that time, the photos looked really grainy and very, you know, streaky and it, and it didn't last. I mean, the, you know, the ink would fade and you know, so, so it took a lot, of, it took many, many years, it took almost like half of my career to see that improve to the point where now everybody just prints photos. When they, when they print photos at all, when they're not just sitting on your phone, <laughs> um, they are printed via printer, not via, they're not developed like, um, they're no longer developed unless you, you, you go specifically to, to a photo developing place. So it makes me wonder, you know, how many years are we away from color printing and then how many years beyond that are we away from color like you know really high quality color 3d printing where you can literally just say where we're that way we can say okay i want a luke skywalker dressed in han solo clothing let's make that up let's order it boom on the hasbro site here's the file print it out comes out all done you just gotta maybe put a few pieces together and done I don't know. It seems more like model making to me than action figures. So, but that's one. That's one area I think that we could see a, a huge change. Another area would be just, well, you know, just the uh, we've talked about this. You know, the the whole play pattern of kids is different now. I can't tell you how many times I see kids like, when I'm in the when I'm you know I spend a lot of time at Disney parks and there are kids sitting in there strollers and the parents are pushing them there or when they're sitting having dinner. When they're when they're in the parks they're still having a great time. They're they're going on rides, they're saying the characters, they're 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 being kids. You know, they're being kids the same way as you and I were kids. But when they're sitting at the restaurant, when you know we go to eat dinner and they're at the restaurant, what are they doing? Me, I, I took a bag of figures with me wherever I went. I had a little tiny tote bag. And whether I went to Disney or anywhere else or on vacation, I had a little tote bag of figures and I took it with me and I would just play with them at the table or in the back of the car. Nope, not anymore. Now they have what is essentially an iPad and they are just playing games and watching stuff on iPad. And that's it. They're not, they're not really, you know, and I'm not saying that's bad or good or anything. I'm just saying what it is, what I've observed. So, the thing is that the play patterns for children are, are changing. My, my wife was a technology teacher for, for first and second graders for 20 years. She knows that they just play differently than they used to. I mean, they, I mean kids still like to go outside and play. They like, to, they like to run around. They like to climb on, you know, the jungle gym and the you know, playground, playground, and they like to play ball. And they do, that stuff is still around. But when it comes to action figure role, action figure play, I think we're getting more and more into kids wanting to role play, you know, 
which is I think why Hasbro is doing things more with like lightsabers and things like that. And and if, and, I, and the only reason they're doing that, and not blasters, is I think that there's so much. Um, there's been so you know so it's such a polarizing debate about you know gun control that I think more and more toy companies are just getting away from making toy guns. You know, just just because it's such a hot button. But lightsabers, not there yet. They love the lightsabers. So. We have lightsabers of all kinds. We have from like really high-end prop movie prop replica lightsabers that you can buy in the store to toy ones that have the f characters' faces on them on the hilt. So who knows? Anyway, all right. But toys are still being sold by collectors and bought by collectors, and uh, that's where I am going today. So let's quickly go fast forwarding to our toy show. It is a. It is an. A, it is at a local Hampton Inn, and we will see what we can find. So you were going to put them in their backpack? I've <laughs> <laughs> done rescue <laughs> things. <laughs> Grab one out of there. Grab Ivar. Take Ivar. Presentation is there. Like, I really spent a lot of time. 
Good, how are you doing today? Yeah, exactly. I don't understand the point of it. Yeah, she, you know, bless her heart. I don't know that. I to be on Thank you. 
Good, how are you? Good, good. A couple things you like, let me know, we'll make a deal. Our prices are always negotiable. Okay. Okay, so not a bad uh, walk through. Um, still Funko Pop heavy. I feel like they should call these toy shows Funko Pop shows with a few other toys thrown in. But I did not pick up any Funko Pop. I, I didn't make a lot of purchases today. Um, basically, I went to I got some stuff. I do like to support the vendors. I know that's you know some people look at it like oh you know they're taking you know they're taking stuff off the shelves and they're scalping it. That might be that might have been true. But I think now with the with the you know the, the demise of domestic United States Toys R Us's, uh, it it has changed. You know the whole the whole framework has changed. I believe that now it's kind of an I don't know, I want to say an every man for themselves, every person for themselves. But I do kind of feel like this is kind of the way of it now. And a lot of stuff, um, you know, when you order stuff online, uh, there are certain things, and you can see when when you when you see what I picked up that. Uh, you know, these people, Some in the cases of new toys, I got something new and I got something vintage. In the case of something new, they, I feel, are really just trying to, um, you know, find what's popular and see what they can do. So, what did I get? Well, two items. We have our, we have a Mandalorian retro uh, prototype figure. And I already have this or ordered it. But, um, you know, as the prototypes you can show, there's actually like six different versions. So I actually picked up two. Uh, obviously the colors are different. This is the only Mandalorian figure that I have more, or only, sorry, prototype figure that I have more than one type now. Now I don't remember what my current one is, if I even got it yet. I can't remember if it's come in the mail yet. I know I, I you know, pre-ordered these, they are 2023. So I think they came in the mail already. And we will see. But if not, and maybe, the, and if one of them ends up being the same exact match as this, well, then maybe I'll just unbox that one, you know, and and we'll keep these two separate like that. So that was one thing. And then, as I said, that that was the vintage. That was the new item. The vintage item. I, I, I'm going to say vintage adjacent. Um, I was amazed at how much they were selling figures. Or, you know, vintage. I'm doing, and I mean really vintage like 70s and 80s, Star Wars figures, in Ziplocs. If they were incomplete, they were selling them for 15 to $20. If they were complete, they were selling them for 30 to $40. If they were incomplete and broken, like I saw a C-3PO without a hand, they were still trying to get five bucks for them. But I went around to different vendors and there weren't that many that even had them. And those that did, that is how much they were going for it. So I guess that is the going price. I did not pick up any um, vintage figures. The one thing I am going to do is go through my vintage collection of figures and do a do a, uh, a catalog. In fact, I might even do this later today. Do a catalog of each vintage figure and, and their weapons. Because these people, I went to a vendor that was selling weapons. And the weapons they were selling for like $5, $3, $2. But I'm like, hey, that's you know, that's a, that's a no-brainer if I can go, uh, go around and like quickly assess which weapons I need and then just kind of keep that on a checklist with me on my phone, that would be really, really smart. So, um, but as I said, I picked up something vintage adjacent. I got this little five pack of erasers from Return of the Jedi. There's a, uh, this is, um, I just put them up here, right? There's a uh, Emperor's Royal Guard. There's actually two of them. Okay, here's the second one. I'll, put, I'll, I'll frame them on either side here. Come on, come on. Where are you? There we go. Stay there. Stay. <laughs> and then, of course, we have to put Vader in the middle. <laughs> ah! This is on a slant, guys. I'm going to put them down here. Maybe I'll put all three of them down here. Because that looks... Poor Vader looks kind of short. All right? And then, got a little R2. 
This R2 is kind of weird though, because if you look closely, he doesn't have a front. I don't see his front thing, so that's that's him, R2. And then, what a wicket. So, that's nice, okay. So, that's a nice little, I think, you know, that's a nice thing. It's it's a throwback, uh, 83 was my, my, my middle school years. I was all excited to have my Return of the Jedi erasers. I don't think I ever used them. I think I might have tried to use them once and like, I think Admiral Akbar's head came off or something. So that was just a kind of a happy memory. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of keep them near all my vintage stuff. Um, and then this was, they threw this in for free. They were gonna, <laughs> they actually had a couple of these, these little proofs of purchases that you could get from the, uh, that were on the, you know, that were on the, 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 the uh, you know, the, either the play sets or the action figures. So they cut a few off and they were trying to sell them for like three bucks, but they threw them in. Not that I was expecting that much, but it was kind of cool. You know, I liked, you know, I don't even know how old these are because these are, oh yeah, Star Wars action figure three packs. So I don't know if these were the original, original, like really valuable three packs or if they were just, you know, newer three packs and they were just putting them on there for fun. But nonetheless, they threw it in for free. So I'll put them in my little scrapbook, my little Star Wars scrapbook. So. So all in all, I was pretty, you know, happy with it. It's just, you know, it's it's a little bit kind of, you know, as an aging toy collector, seeing so many new things kind of take over the old things. I mean, I was seeing people that, the one thing I found was a little bit kind of shedding a tear. Not, I, I understand why, but people, um, a lot of people had, or not a lot of people, a few vendors had some Power of the Force. The Power of the Force is really going on the discount pile. There's just not a lot of value in Power of the Force. I mean, I'm talking about 94, 95 through the, almost to the Clone Wars. There just isn't a lot of value in any of that. And I think it's just because it was so mass produced. There was so much of it. But I was seeing some vehicles, beautiful vehicles, like an A-Wing and, you know, those in the green boxes, you know. And I love that A-Wing. In fact, I love that A-Wing so much. I sold my, my original vintage A-Wing, which was broken. Fair point. It was not a, it was not a mint item. But I sold that and then bought the new one because it was the exact same mold. So I figured, well, do I really need the old one? Of course, the old one was in the droids box and that made it like really, you know, super, super viable, but whatever. Um, I, did, I didn't sell it, I traded it. And I traded it for a few, I, I traded a broken A-wing and a carded Star Wars Stormtrooper that was damaged for, a, for the uh, Sandcrawler the remote control Sears or JCPenney 70s Sandcrawler and, and the box. So I felt I got a better deal. Anyway, so uh, it's just not, it's just weird to see so few vendors doing Star Wars anymore and so many vendors doing Funko Pop. I don't know how that bubble hasn't burst yet. I'm planning on getting rid of mine, uh, except for a few, a few like sentimental ones. I think that's kind of where I'm going with Funko Pop. I, I want to keep like a handful of ones that like you know, anything that's really important to me, a real resonant character or something of that nature. But beyond that, you know, I don't, I don't see me keeping those and I don't know how much longer that's gonna, they, I know that they've dumped a huge amount of product, like, like, like destroy them. So the company, so I don't know how much longer they're gonna have, but we'll see. People still like them. They're still selling them. So we'll see what happens. So that'll do it for this episode of Darth Superstars, a boxing show on the road. Check me out on Instagram X and Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, the Star Wars, I can never say it. Darth Tuba's Star Wars unboxing page on Facebook. Check out all the other content on Red 5 Network. Thank you, Red 5, for supporting this channel. Until next time, may the Force and the toys be with you.